let's delve into our conversation for Prime Inside, and we are talking about menstruation. The do's, the don'ts, the poverty aspects of menstrual hygiene. Uh, what is really causing all of these things? We've seen so many people uh, come out to help young ladies advocate for the government also to take off taxes from a menstruation part. But what has happened so far? Nothing. Also, when we talk about menstruation, some people might not know too much about menstruation, especially when we go to the rural areas where you say menstruation, they'll ask you, what is menstruation? They, they call it other names. They have different terms for it. Menstruation is when a woman bleeds every month periodically and uh, this is a result of her not getting pregnant from the eggs that she releases so when she releases the eggs and she doesn't get pregnant the egg comes out as a blood and it comes every month and it's for mature women so it's not just um you know children but a youth, woman who is of age to get pregnant we are delving into this conversation now this woman who is my guest here is trying so hard to make sure she puts smiles on the faces of women who cannot afford pad a woman who cannot afford to have hygienic menstruation period because of poverty. Good morning, Anefa Atefua. She is the founder of FAMD. Good morning, darling. Good morning. How are you today? Hi, thank you. You're looking nice. Thanks, you too. Thank, thank you. you so much. <laughs> okay, so as a quick one, mm -hmm. it's, um, it's, it's a conversation that's dear to every woman, mm -hmm. especially a woman who sees less privileged women who struggle to take care of themselves. You know, because you are looking at a situation where I can do it for myself, but can the next person do it? You go to the market to buy a pad. You can afford it, but even you that can afford it, you wonder why so much tax yes. on it. Yes. A little bit about menstruation, mm -hmm. the hygienic aspect of menstruation. Of course, the do's, everybody knows that you need to wear a pad and all of yes. that, but they don't. Let's talk about that. So, like you said, thank you so very much. Thanks for having me again. Like you said... The, you've explained it very well. Menstruation is what happens when a woman doesn't get pregnant. The unfertilized egg drops. It happens every 28 days. It's a hormone cycle. And it's a very normal part of every, most women and girls. They spend at least about maybe 38 years of their life menstruating. So it, every month, someone somewhere is menstruating. But the, um, the don'ts, or I guess what happens when they do, when they do menstruate, and they don't have enough supplies, like you mentioned, is that sometimes they end up wearing a pad for too long or they end up using improper uh, supplies, like maybe leaves mm -hmm. or even little bits of foam or some rags or old socks or even newspapers. When you ask the girls, they just bundle them up and put them under there that be because they can't afford to buy pads, like you said. Now, I think in 2001, mm -hmm. Pads were actually being sold for about 3 to 12 CDs, based on which brand you pick. Right now, they're about 18 to 25 CDs. So the same way inflation has affected rice, oil, it's also affected pads. But now we have the added luxury tax on top of that, which makes it impossible for the normal Exactly, to... and you wonder why pad is a luxury. Because when did it become a luxury? And no woman has ever thought menstruation was a luxury. Mm -hmm. So then why are pads a luxury item? I mean, I, I can't imagine condoms being a luxury item mm -hmm. because they're not. So, and I think these are reasons why some, if the women or people in parliament should really think about because we do not have the option to not menstruate. Mm -hmm. We don't, if, and if, if we did, many women would just opt out because menstruation is not pleasant. It's not a luxury at all there should be no reason why it should be this expensive for us to get it and then when it is so expensive it forces the girls to enter into the sex trade mm -hmm. which then leads into more health issues because then they're getting stds like the hiv and then they're spreading that and it it, it has a trickle down effect on the whole economy so it's not just girls that suffer if someone has has aids or hiv and she comes to sleep with someone else's husband who's mm -hmm. being adulterous he takes that home to his wife his wife gets it it just it, it hurts everybody so yeah the, the most of our economic issues would be solved if we just went down to the base mm. route which is girls not having enough supplies to be able to use um yeah. pads in the school the yeah. in school and uh, you know another thing that you know people always talk about is that the fact that we have access to parts yet you have to keep changing your pad in a day <laughs> yes this question keeps popping up because some people will wear it in the morning and then in the evening, that's when they change it. 
How many times in a day must one change their pad? Well, typically about every four to six hours. But honestly, most people cannot afford to be changing their pads every four to six hours. That it depends on your flow. If your flow mm -hmm. is very heavy, you'll be changing it more often. Some people can change pads up to four times a day. But who can afford to change pads four times a day for a buy now 25 CDs per box? Mm -hmm. And there's only about 12 in there. You go, you'll run through one in three days and then most people bleed for three to seven days. So you're going to need 50 CDs every month to spend on pads. It's exorbitant. It's, it's unimaginable. It's can, like, can you substitute with a tissue? Please, no. Mm. Um, you, you may briefly for maybe five minutes and then you bleed through the tissue or any other, even if you use newspapers, even if you use foam, leaves, whatever else the girls use, they bleed right through it. And that's another reason why they, they end up not going to school because then they'd rather stay home. Because if you saw yourself at school, then boys are going to laugh at you. It's, it's not a dignified way. You can use a tissue in a pinch in an emergency mm -hmm. while you go find a pad, but mm -hmm. you really shouldn't. It's, it's not going to help you in the long run. What are some of the consequences if you don't take good care of yourself or change your pad frequently? If you don't change your pads often, you're going to end up getting um, urinogenital infections, uh, candida, thrush, UTIs. Those are just going to breed because if you're sitting in wetness, mm. in moist, it's not pleasant. Your whole, your whole day is ruined because you just, it's just wet. Mm -hmm. And um, so, yeah. You, you end Somebody up might say that mm -hmm. they don't bleed heavily and so they can wear one pad, you know, for probably close to <clears throat> 10 hours before they change it. Well, the flora of the, um, you know, the female flora mm -hmm. down there, whilst you might think you're okay, it will also depend on the quality of the pad that you're using. Some pads are really good at wicking away the liquid and keeping the surface dry. Right. So that might work for you. But sometimes if you don't, you might even develop a rash in between your legs as well because it's wet and it's hot and you're just carrying around this heat and you will start to smell. It's not, it's not pleasant for anybody, mm. for you or the people around you, because it, it gives off an odor, yeah. Is this the cause of some women smelling? Sometimes, mm. yes. But they don't know, right? No, or they because know, they are but sitting they, they in it. They can't afford it. <laughs> they can't afford it. This is their life, and they're used to, you, after a while, you go nose blind, so you don't smell it. Mm. But the people around you do. Yeah. You can join this conversation as well as we're talking about menstruation do's and don'ts. So send your messages. Of course, we'll definitely love to read your message live on air. We're streaming on Facebook. And we're getting to know the kind of things that you are not supposed to do when you are menstruating. Now, one thing that keeps popping up is the fact that you ought to keep changing your part periodically. I mean, uh, often, it's not even it's, if often, very, very often, as frequent as possible if you, if you can afford it. But the only challenge that we have is the cost of Pad on the market, where uh, currently the part that people used to buy at a cost of um, what seven cities is now eighteen cities. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and this this even the cheapest part. Mm -hmm. So for those who can't afford the part, then what do they do? What's their next step? What are you supposed to do during your menses to have a hygienic menstrual cycle? Well, high menstrual hygiene is basic. You know, take regular showers, keep change your pads often. Do not douche. There's really no need for anybody to be douching. The vagina is self-cleaning. There's no need for anybody to be helping. It doesn't need help that way. And also just, I mean, don't spray perfumes down there. Yeah. Don't do that. Don't. If it smells, wash it. It will be fine. Regular soap and water is fine. If you need extra um, disinfecting or extra deodorizing, you might use lime and just a little, like, but You know rub. that, they are, they are uh, you know... Um, Vagina perfumes, mm -hmm. vagina. Yes, I've seen you, them. You see them, right? Yes. Not advisable. No, and also why? The, the the if if there was a vaginal spray, I would be asking why do you need a vaginal spray? Why why are you smelling? You're not supposed to smell. Mm. So then why why don't you want to find out the root cause of that smell and treat that instead of camouflaging it with spray? I, I would be worried. Mm. Yeah. Well, let's talk about how to dispose of your pad as well. How do you get rid of it? Please do not flush it. That's, it, it blocks the septic. It, it causes problems. Just wrap it up in a little bit of newspaper and put it in with a regular trash. Don't flush the pads. That definitely is a big no-no. Um, yeah, and that's pretty much it, mm. really. That's the basic disposable pads, yes. Of course, if you're using reusable pads, 
um, or not reusable pads, but like reusable underwear, then definitely wash them and hang them out to dry in the sun so that they're dry thoroughly because those are very absorbent, so they're going to be heavy. Right. And then we dry them on the sun, you can reuse them again. Mm. There are also um, menstrual cups and uh, discs. Those are ones that you insert. They are the more sustainable ones. So you insert those, they collect the fluid, you pour it out into the toilet, and then you rinse out the cup. Mm. But yeah, make sure you rinse it out properly with soap and water. Make sure it's very dry, and then you can reuse it again. Yeah. Now, using of the cup, is it affordable? Um, in the long term, yes. The initial cost might be a bit prohibitive, but in the long term, yes, it works out. You, one cup can replace up to about maybe um, three or four months worth of, um, I mean, three or, yeah, three or four months worth of pads. So, yeah, you'll be fine. Can a virgin use the cup? Is that yes, right? it doesn't break. Okay. It, it doesn't. It goes in and then it sits. All right. So, it's, it's like a little funnel. It goes in and mm. it, it just opens up right to just collect. It does not break your hymen, no. Mm. And how comfortable is it? Um, well, I guess with the right insertion technique, you, you, um, it's comfortable you enough. You can adjust. Yeah, you can adjust. And okay. then if the, cause the cup is a little bit longer, if you can't, if the cup is not comfortable, you might use the disc. It looks like a cereal bowl, mm. the disc. So it's, it's a little bit shorter. It doesn't come out as much. Okay. But yeah. What about the tampons? Is it advisable for, you know, um, virgins? Yes, they can use tampons. Okay. Yes, they can all, anybody can use Using period products does not break your virginity. It's not, it shouldn't preclude, wanting to be a virgin should not preclude you from using period products. Just, you're, it, it doesn't go in high enough to break a hymen. It doesn't, okay. no. So yeah, the tampons, they go in, they're really tiny, they go in, but then they expand a little and then they just soak up. Mm. So no, it doesn't break anything. Are you supposed to change the tampon as often as you change your pad? Yes, tampons do absorb more, mm. but yes, um, you should be changing them often as well yes okay mm -hmm. you can join the conversation as well like we said earlier we are discussing menstruation do's and don't not just that but the fact that it's so expensive for you to afford a pad these days and we are advocating that parliament will actually fight for every woman out there to take off this luxury tax on pads we don't understand why there is luxury tax on pads uh, you've lived abroad let me ask you first do you have luxury tax on pads? Um, um, tax on pads as well. A pink tax. Yeah. Some states do, but it's being fought. So, in, uh, yeah, some states still do, but in most states, we're having it um, taken off now. And in certain states, too, we're also fighting to have it free in bathrooms. Like menstrual hygiene products should be free in bathrooms mm -hmm. because it is a hygiene product. Just like soap, just like water, we should be able to get pads as well. Right. Yeah, and certain workplaces to also provide them. Mm. For their now, I see them. these bags on the table. Let's talk a bit about <laughs> these bags. What do they do? So these, well, the SI here is my uh, nonprofit that I started when I turned uh, 40 this year. So I decided to engage in philanthropy instead. So I um, started the Sante initiative. Sante means health in French, and it's also an um, my mom's Asanto Asa was also an economist. Okay. Yes, and then um, with this one here, I decided to address, I started it to address women and girls' health issues in Ghana specifically. And the first project that we we're taking on is the TOM project, which is um, T-O-M, which means time of the month. Okay. So that's to address period poverty. Now, these bags here I made to sell as period kits. So you can load them with um, supplies that you would need I made them um, waterproof material on the inside. Right. So yes, the supplies that you would need for your period, maybe a pad, a little bit of medicine, some wipes, and that way when you, you keep this in your purse, you can also add like your makeup, whatever. It's like mm. a, it's a, pen, it's a makeup case. Mm -hmm. But um, when you do get your period outside and you're not at home, you already have this and you can use it you know, really quickly while you wait to get home to get actual supplies. Because I remember when I started my period, my mm -hmm. mom always told me to keep a pad on me. So every bag I had, you know, the inside zip, there was always a little pad in there. So now you can just use this instead and it carries more. Um, for the uh, menstrual hygiene day, which is May the 28th, um, I actually decided to go do a donation project at a school in the Eastern region. It's called um, Aztec. So over there, I'm actually going to give the girls these bags okay. here. There you go. So these are reusable um, drawstring bags that we're mm -hmm. giving the girls, so they can reuse those. And then inside them, um, there are 
two <coughs> there, there are two pads here I was uh, I bought them locally so I tried to find one that was made in Ghana okay yeah and then um, also inside so they have their their own tom bag I call okay. these tom bags here so they have their own and inside them I gave them period panties which are like regular underwear but they have the pads built in and oh. these are reusable oh really <laughs> yeah they're reusable. tell us about it they are okay. yep they're underwear and then right here if you want to feel i won't open this so, so that's fine yeah. okay yeah if you want to feel so the pad is already built in mm. they wear it when they get their period and then um when they go home they wash it but they have to wash it and make sure it, it, it dries really really well okay because sometimes um in the rural areas, because of the stigma, they usually try to dry their underwear indoors. Mm -hmm. It's important that you dry it, make it hang out in the sun so it dries very well. And it covers all the way up to your backside. How so, long can you use this for? It, this, the same rules apply. It's, it's just a pad with a, uh, a panty with a pad built in. So the same rules apply, only about four to six hours. Mm. But if this happens, if you end up getting a period during your school day while you're in school and this is in your bag, you can wear this and it will help because you know in the beginning of your period you're not bleeding you're as not heavily bleeding. anyway yeah. so you can wear this and then when you go home you can change and start using the pads that you already have right Watch okay because uh, my next question was going to be you know looking at it and feeling it it feels a bit light mm -hmm. will it be able to absorb somebody yes. who's a heavy bleeder yes actually um so when i looked when i because i researched before i decided on which brand to pick it can actually hold about um 12 mls of fluid and usually most uh, people when we bleed it's about 36 so we're fine yeah you okay. can use that yeah okay so you can use it and when you're using this mm -hmm. you know we with a pad we're supposed to you know change probably every four hours mm -hmm. how many hours can you wear this before you change it about four to six same, hours yeah same, same. Mm -hmm. okay yeah right yeah because this is supposed to just last until you get home okay you know when it starts it's an accident it's an oops you wear that, you get home. So you don't wear it when you're bleeding very heavy? You can't actually wear it when you're bleeding heavy. I know, I know, God, yes. They'll end up wearing only this and then Please. no stuff. <laughs> <laughs> We're not spilling it. Let me come for no. you. Because <laughs> that's how accidents happen. So yeah. no, I try not to. If this is all you have, definitely you, you are more than welcome to use that because it is, again, it's reusable. If you had two, you could wear one during the day and one at night. Okay. You know, but I'm only giving out one, so you would wear that one and then use the pads also. If you're a heavy bleeder, let me ask this. Mm -hmm. If you're a heavy bleeder, mm -hmm. can you add a pad to it yes. to wear it? Yes. Okay. You've, yes, I would advise that. That way, when you do soak through the pad, you also have the second barrier there just holding you. That way you don't stain your clothes. Okay. But is it easily accessible? You're the only one who has it. We can get it in Ghana? Well, I'm looking and I've actually spoken to a, a couple of manufacturers and I've shown them this. They are very interested in it. So, you know, we're going to walk through prototypes and samples and see if we can actually get it here. Mm. But um, initially, because we're going into rural areas and we weren't even sure if they had access to good clean water to wash and dry, I decided to just do just the one just to see. And then this is kind of like a trial introduce it to the girls see how it takes and then when it does then we can ramp up production and do more for okay them. yeah all right okay so uh, we're looking at this and uh, i bet most of you this is the first time you're seeing this uh those who have seen it to know already how it's used but for the first timers it's a panty uh pad which you can use uh, during the first day actually she says you can use it throughout though mm -hmm. but advisable that you use it the first day they have a pad inserted in it it's reusable so how long can you use it before you get rid of it it's reusable so long as you're washing and drying you can keep going about you use three it for years please no no not for years maybe <laughs> three to four months <laughs> maybe three to four months is fine so in the long term it's sustainable okay <laughs> Because number one, when we use the pads, mm. we have a product that we have to throw away and put in the trash. Now, if a woman is, you know, 38 years of periods, if she goes through a box of maybe 14, every woman is going to be throwing away at least maybe 10,000 pads. Mm. That's rubbish. We can use this, wash it, reuse, wash, reuse. And then uh, we're trying to get a, it's, it's cotton. The materials in there are biodegradable, so we're trying to get those so that 
even if we, we do have to throw them away, we're not throwing away as many right. as we would if we're just Is it one that. size fits all? Or no, there are multiple sizes, yeah. Okay, yeah. right. So your size is dependent on your size, and then you can have it. Mm -hmm. So you're going to schools to donate these yes, items um, to them? Yes, yes. I'm going to Aztec, which is Atefa Secondary mm -hmm. Technical High School in Achimoda. The name is your name. Is it your school? No. Okay. No, no. <laughs> it's just um, in Achimoda, the Atefa okay. um, is a... Po popular name okay popular, yeah so there are many things called atifa in there but um yeah there are about a thousand girls there so i was only able to this was self-funded because this was my birthday money that i used to do this so instead of doing the the bamba and oh, the photo shoots i decided i'll just convert that into this to actually do good and you know help other people instead so I'll, i was able to get like maybe two months worth and then if i add on the panties they can probably stretch it out but I have, since I've been here, I've spoken to local, um, local distributors mm -hmm. and some other um, companies as well that are engaged in period menstrual hygiene work. And so I'll be able to get maybe a subsidized price for that. Yeah. But so they're giving it to you as that, or they haven't started yet to give it to you at a subsidized price? No, we're still in Not talks. Yet. Yeah, because I only just came. Please, let me plead uh, on her behalf. If she's written a letter to you or you are a company owner and you're watching this, this is something that you should invest in, your corporate social responsibility. Try and support such a worthy <laughs> cause. Now, buying a menstruation pad is so expensive. You might be able to afford it. But that young girl out there, that woman out there who can't even afford a three square meal, how can that woman afford a pad that's going for 18 cities? She would rather use the money to feed her children than to use it to buy a pad. So please and please again, do support a worthy cause. And this is definitely a worthy cause. I wish we had a lot of these panties in Ghana. Mm -hmm. uh, can we get it in Ghana or is it not accessible in Ghana unless you get it from abroad? Well, I mean... We eventually it will come to Ghana because I know a company, I know one who is very heavily working on it and is trying to get this launched within the year. Mm. So yes, and we are hoping that whoever gets it, taxes will not be so high, so the person will be able to sell it at an affordable price for every woman out there. Like we say, menstruation is not a choice. God gave it to us. We don't have it. If, if you had a choice, would you have it? No, no. no. I've, I, there are some women in my church that she. I think she announced. Two weeks ago, I think she just hit 50 and she was like, I think I've hit menopause. And she was elated, over the moon about to just announce to everyone. And she, was, and she just couldn't wait to get out of She it. couldn't wait. She really couldn't wait to be done with this. Yeah. So, yeah. And I know women who actually, like, after having two, three children, they say, take out my womb. I don't want to menstruate again. Mm -hmm. And when it comes to childbirth, so when we're actually going in, it's a mixed school. So we're educating the girls and the boys because we find that, well, 50% of the population is women. And we, they live with us, so they need to know what we're going through. Mm -hmm. They need to know how our hormones affect us. They need to know and be able to help us through that time what to do. Mm -hmm. And some, there are some husbands, when I spoke, when I did a little brief um, survey in America, some husbands think that once you have a child, you're done menstruating. In America? So, yeah, so then they think that... This, this is not Ghana. Please, no. In America? So, wow. I'm, I'm just, I'm not sure. I haven't done that research here. But I'm just saying, if, if this is in America, <laughs> then you can imagine. Yeah. But yeah, women menstruate until 60 or 50, okay? Mm -hmm. it, it happens. Post-childbirth, the only time you're not menstruating is when you're, you're pregnant. If you're not pregnant, you're going to menstruate. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that happens. And even that, uh, you know, some women end up menstruating more heavier after having children. Yes. Yep, you know, that's exactly they, might, they might have regular menstruation mm -hmm. uh, before having children. But once they have children, their menstruation cycle changes. They might be, you know, menstruating three days. And then after childbirth, it goes into five days, goes into clotting, more clotting. And that could also lead to fibroids. So, mm -hmm. um... Uh, it's, it's, it's a good conversation that we've had this morning, I must say. And this has excited me very much. How much are we selling these bags for? Probably somebody out there would want to purchase a lot to support mm -hmm. your foundation. Ah, thank you. Yes, uh, so on the website, which is the santainitiative.org, they're actually selling for seven CDs per bag. I mean, seven, do seven US dollars per bag, I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah. All right, so in Ghana cities, you say like 14 cities or yeah. 15 cities? 15, yeah. 15, 15 cities, yeah. okay. Yeah. So we're selling this for 15. So how can one get uh, in touch with you to purchase some of your bags? Well, first, my website, uh, which is the santainitiative.org, or you could go to our uh, Instagram, which is also 
oh down there which is also oh look here which is also at sante gh um and there, there are links on there to our website but my phone number also is zero five three one two six two six seven nine so that's also three ways that you can reach us okay so i uh, my producer just did a calculation in my Yes. We lied. So, <laughs> we lied. I, I felt it, but I was like, no, she seems confident. Okay. <laughs> All right, so $7 is not the 40. 40. It's like what? 70 cities, right? So it's about 70. Okay. Yeah. All right, so it's, it's about 70 cities. Okay. But if which you're is, buying in bulk, good. we can still adjust the price. No, but you see, the thing bulk. is, yeah. it's for a good cause. It is. It's not that she's selling to make profit. <laughs> she's selling so she can help the less privileged out there. So if you're investing 70 cities, imagine you're helping a young lady with 100 cities. If I were you, instead of paying 70, I'll pay 100. Seriously. Pay 70, pay 100. Because you're helping somebody out there. And you can afford the 100 cities. So why not? If you can even afford 1,000 cities, buy in bulk. She'll supply to you. You can give it to some less privileged people out there. And that money as well that you give to her, she will use it to support other people. So she's not putting it in her pocket. Now, one thing that will tell you that she doesn't, she's not greedy, is the fact that she didn't do party. <laughs> I'm only 25, but when I turn 40, I, I don't know. I'm thinking maybe I'll do party. I don't know yet. Maybe I'll blah, blah. Maybe I but this shoot. Is... <laughs> I just wanted this... to add, mm -hmm. I also, um, so I partnered with Kole Kaur, who is a jewelry maker here in okay. Ghana, to make these uh, beads as well. And these are going for $17 on the website. Okay. And then we also have these earrings by Cherry oh, Baby. Yeah, those are also selling for ten dollars on the website. Okay. Yeah, All but right. these are our local um, artists here in Ghana mm -hmm. who made these to support the project. So yeah, Cherry Baby and Core. So it's a project and that is a worthy cause. So you ought to celebrate and support this worthy cause. Great, great, great initiative you have there. You. Uh, we've seen so many people saying that we are supporting, but uh, it's the long-term effect. The long-term, yes. You yeah. know, the long -term. This will definitely not be a flash in the pan. I want this to live beyond me, and I want to do more than just address period poverty. I'm looking at endometriosis. I'm looking at sickle cell as well in the coming months. I'm Period poverty is for May because May is menstrual hygiene, mm -hmm. May 28th menstrual hygiene day, but yeah, in the coming months and years i'll be doing more projects here all right yeah. thank you so much for being here no we are super grateful thank you for and having um, me. i'm glad that i met somebody like you today thank you super grateful uh, her name is nane fua atefua she's the founder of famd and she actually is a helping the young ladies out there <coughs> who are less privileged to get access to menstruation uh, products. So it's menstrual hygiene, and these panties actually have tickled my fancy this morning. Make sure you get the bags. It's going for 70 cities. You can actually just pay 100 cities for a bag. It's not going to go into a pocket, but rather to support the young ladies who can have access to menstrual part. And she's giving these bags out as well on Monday, right? They're giving the bags on out. Friday. On Friday. On Friday. All right, yeah. so she's giving the bags out. Friday's tomorrow. Yes, it is. Oh, okay. Oh, so I'm these really bags are going them. out tomorrow to some uh, less privileged ladies out there. And I know they'll be grateful yep. and they'll appreciate you for the rest of their lives. Thanks. Thank you for being here today. All right, so on that note, we'll take a quick break.